thank you for joining uh, this part of today's uh, presentation and keynotes. I'm really excited to have with me um, some customers, but also some long-standing iGel friends uh, with me. This morning, I'm joined uh, by Mikhail from uh, Spana Hospital, uh, Daniel from uh, Laboral Cookster, uh, Emil from the Swedish Social Insurance Agency, and Kevin from the Phoenix Group. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Hi, sir. morning. Good morning. So if we just get rid of that screen, hopefully now everybody can uh, obviously see us. It's been an interesting, obviously, six months, six months post when the pandemic uh, and lockdown started for many countries and many organizations. Actually, that came with some challenges. But, you know, over the last couple of weeks, I've been speaking to all of you about how your organizations have dealt with those challenges. Um, and, you know, the good news is, is that I think all of you hopefully would agree that you were able to um, enable work from home where possible in incredibly quickly. But um, I just wonder, are there any stories or challenges that you may have faced either at the start of that or during the last six months that, that you might want to uh, highlight to us? You're all using a form of desktop virtualization um, and iGel. Maybe, uh, Mikel, could we start with you? You are a, a VMware VDI customer a user of iGel, there's what, 4,000 odd employees, staff and students that you have to support in your hospital. How was that, how was that transition for you? Um, working from home was no issue at all because we had, like you said, uh, the VMware VDI in place. We had, uh, we had it uh, connected to the internet so people were able to log in from their homes. Um, the biggest challenge was um, making people uh, talk, uh, communicate with each other uh, besides email and WhatsApp and stuff like that. So we had to implement uh, some form of unified communication really fast. Uh, we decided to go with Cisco WebEx um, and within one, maybe two weeks, we had the entire hospital migrated and working and, and, and communicating uh, through those kind of platforms. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about Phoenix Group? Yeah, so we've, um, yeah, so, so Phoenix are the, the UK's largest long term savings and retirement business. So we've actually got about 7,000 colleagues in the UK and um, we look after about 14 million policies for customers. So we've got brands such as Sun Life, Standard Life, uh, and I'm based in the Edinburgh office. Um, yeah, so we, um, like most other organizations, faced a sort of hardware shortage as you know COVID affected supply chains globally and um, a lot of suppliers were struggling to provide laptops um, so we um, we used we had iGel thin clients in our smaller remote offices we also used the UD pocket as well for disaster recovery um, we have a third-party business continuity site and um, we, we use UD pocket there um, so we had uh, we obviously had iGel capability, and um, we uh, so we re we looked at repurposing some laptops, uh, and because the OS is so lightweight, we were able to repurpose some of the older laptops that we'd maybe retired, uh, some of the lower spec devices, and uh, ship those out. Uh, so that was our initial approach. A few folks uh, weren't used to working on laptops and we had sort of customer services agents uh, and uh, that, that were used to desktops and dual screens. And um, so although we did have supplies of laptops coming in uh, from suppliers, we actually looked to our 3000 desktops in our Edinburgh office and um, which were now sitting basically doing nothing. <laughs> So we actually began repurposing those and um, shipping out what we called our office in a box. And this effectively was an iGel PC with a couple of screens in a box. And um, we used our in-house logistics team to box all these up and deliver them as well to our staff homes. And, um, you know, using the, oh, the, the iGel OS obviously meant that you just turned the thing on and the staff were presented with a familiar login screen uh, without them having to do any configuration. They didn't have to install Citrix workspace on a device. Uh, so these things, these things were, were good to go when they arrived. So, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Um, Daniel, what about you? You're also in the financial 
services industry and um, long-time user of IGEL and, and VDI. Um, how was it for you? Mm, we have uh, a very good experience uh, because uh, we were uh, everyone in VDI and everything in, in IGEL. In IGEL. Um, but uh, we have problems with the home users because their PCs, uh, they were, uh, some, some of them were fine, but the other was like uh, uh, very bad PCs. Uh, so we use uh, UDC Pocket to avoid uh, all of these old PCs and all Windows with all the stuff on their uh, uh, antivirus, uh, all the application and the user is installing on the PC. So uh, we remove uh, that layer. So we avoid uh, a lot of problems with the UDC pocket. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we have to, to get a business continuity uh, because, uh, you know, we're, we're a bank and the money has to, to be moved. <laughs> so it was, it was a very big challenge for, for us. Yeah, yeah. Emil, can we, um, can we come to you? I know you've been a, um, a long-term uh, user of uh, VDI and, and, and IGEL and I've got some very good stories about how you got introduced to uh, IGEL uh, at a Citrix Synergy event in Vegas once, but how's the whole last six months been for you? Um, are people now working from home? Are people coming back to the office? We are doing 50-50 here in Sweden, at least at our organization. Mm -hmm. But what we saw was that we already had everything in place, the VDI solutions, the Citrix gateways, and uh, Skype for business. But you know, when people work from home, most of them have kids. And we have a requirement for example, we need to use smart cards. And kids like to play games. And they run some script to optimize the computer and it accidentally turns off some services like smart cards. So I think ID Lewis and UD Pockets is something we, we will really roll out to the employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how many, how many employees are you now serving with your virtualized estate? Uh, we have 14,000 employees and have uh, 5,000 BDIs. Wow, okay. And you use a mix of both the IGEL software and the hardware, correct? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mikael, while I've got you, um, this isn't necessarily uh, IGEL um, uh, or VDI related, but you, you, you told me a really interesting story um, when we spoke last week um, that I think people might want to, want to hear about, which is, you know, when we think about IT, um, and we think about what's happened and the technology we use, we commonly think, particularly in hospitals, about improving patient care by giving the employees, the nurses and the clinicians, a better experience via these technologies. But you've, you've got a story where IT has now been involved in actually taking I, to IT and technology to the patients. Yeah. Um, we were thinking about doing a pilot for uh, patients um, giving them uh, iPads uh, and enabling them to access their uh, EPDs, um, have some kind of entertainment access, uh, TV channels, uh, enabling them to be in touch with their um, friends and family, uh, but also being able to chat with nurses, uh, doctors, etc. So we were already um, starting to make the necessary changes to, to enable us to do so. And then the pandemic came and uh, we thought, well, can't we use the same system to do something for these COVID patients? And again, within a couple of weeks, we had uh, an app and we had tablets. Uh, they were sponsored by different companies um, and we were, we were able to, to really do something for the, the, these COVID patients because they were isolated. They, they, they barely got any visitors. They, 
they were so lonely and by giving them these iPads, we enabled them to, well, to have some kind of entertainment, uh, being in touch with their friends and family. So that was really rewarding. Yeah. But not, not, not only for the patients, but also for uh, the staff working there because um, I went to this department just to look with my own eyes how, how things were going there. And it really made a very big impression seeing those, those nurses, seeing how they were emotionally very, very um, burdened by this COVID pandemic. Mikkel, I think it's a great story. Thank you for sharing it with us. Unified comms seems to be quite a common topic of conversation um, at, at the moment. Um, you know, Kevin, is there um, anything that you've had to do? So we've, um, uh, we were able to utilize the um, HDX optimization uh, to provide the video and um, Skype capability. And the performance has been um, in office like, really. What, what we see that our users did was when working from home, they were using their home computers, their laptops and their private devices to um, start video conferencing. But when they were inside the hospital, they tried using that on our VDI, but we didn't have any local uh, webcams and stuff like that. So uh, they started uh, creating sessions from within their VDIs, but they also started a second session on their mobile phone to have audio and video capabilities. Mm -hmm. So the number of sessions grew uh, enormous. Um, and we're actually looking at implementing a couple of hundreds um, displays with integrated webcams and integrated audio uh, to enable users to use those video conferencing uh, utilities right from their own desktop. I think, I think we're going to see um, there's going to be a, a requirement and a need to have um, the unified columns working both in and out the office. I think what we'll probably see is as staff return to the office, we're going to see more requirements for webcams and headsets and so forth that maybe weren't needed before because folks were collaborating with each other. And I think uh, what we're going to see is it's going to be a sort of mix of working from home and in the office, um, potentially for some time there. And we're going to need that capability, regardless of what endpoint you're using, whether it's in your home or it's at your desk. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting, isn't it? If you'd asked anybody pre-COVID to turn their camera on and to hold every meeting with over a Zoom or a Teams, um, you know, the numbers would have been very, very low. But it's interesting, it's not just IT that is deploying these new technologies, it's now our employers and our users who are actually trying to continue to work in this new way. And as you say, what they've suddenly become accustomed to at home is something they're going to want to carry forward, regardless of whether they're in the home or in the office, in the hospital. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Similar, similar with you, Kevin, how does the, um, as and when you do return to work, um, those PCs that were repurposed with iGel um, and all of the functionality that you're given people at home, do you see that being used back in the office? We do, and that's actually something that we have started uh, to work on. Um, is um, we've been using the OSC uh, utility to convert the Windows PCs in the office, um, so that um, there'll be iGel desktops. So we've sort of accelerated our deployment of iGel endpoints. Uh, there's, there always was a plan to move more towards thin client. I mean, traditionally, particularly in the large Edinburgh office, we've been uh, a thick. Uh, desktop Windows PC, um, but uh, this now enables us to have um, that seamless sort of uh, user interface uh, in the, the device in the office and in the home will look the same. I mean, whether or not these desktops in folks' houses come back or not is, you know, is unknown at this stage. If they do come back, we can uh, we can simply plug them in and manage them, and and and, and they'll remain on the iGel OS. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, very good. So that OSC utility that we have has the ability to be centrally deployed out to machines 
uh, that are running Windows and then convert them remotely into Igel OS. How are you how are you finding that and how are you deploying that? So we have used SCCM to package up the um, effectively it's the, it's the executable that you download from Igel, package that up in your SCCM environment, and then deploy that to your PCs. You can actually deploy that to all your machines um, because the conversion process is done from within the UMS. So the agent that you deploy at the Windows machine simply brings those devices into your UMS uh, and gives you visibility of those. And then when you're ready, uh, you simply right click the device and there's a, 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 com a command that will then kick off the conversion. So, I mean, the, the thing that was also, and I've talked about the, um, we were shipping these desktops out to our staff. Um, I mean, a big thing for us, we, we repurposed those using um, build sticks. Um, but I think even even when you use the USB build stick, I mean, it's, it's, it literally takes about five minutes to to convert a desktop. Um, so um, it's it's such a this is you know this is the thing that's been it's been so you know for us it saves so much time. Um, so you know, dare I ask, um, what would what would the last six months have looked like if there was no VDI? Would that have been a disaster? <laughs> We cannot run everything on VPN. We have already doubled our capacity on VPN, even though we have so many that is running uh, Netscaler Gateway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've heard some fairly big horror stories around people that initially increased their VPN licenses and then suddenly realized that there were challenges with people connected to the VPN all day and that Teams and Zoom and Skype didn't particularly work too well over that is is that something that you've experienced yeah absolutely and it's also a problem to distribute patches security updates and software over the vpn so i think vdi will uh, dramatically increase and also ud pockets because when we have started to use uh, yeah the gateways more frequently we realize as i said the device itself have to be Secured. Yeah. Yeah. So if you boot it at the UD pocket, all the thing you need to bring with you to work and go home is your smart card. So, yeah. I, I yeah. think this is the new normal and we, it will increase. If we can just finish up on just getting sort of like a, a tweet from, e from all of you, if you like. If you were to write a tweet about what the next six to 12 months looks like. What would that What would that tweet say? <clears throat> As I said, I think this is the new normal, and uh, we have to continue to make uh, our solutions more secure, so people can continue to work with home and take part in video conferences over good performance. I think we we will go on with uh, our uh, desktop deployment because well, we are deploying and buy new laptops. So our goal is be uh, on iGirl, the 100% of all our employees. So our goal is be iGirl. Very good. It, it sounds like the like a, a commercial, but yeah. that's the, the, the goal. Yeah, Daniel, I'm good with that, my friend. Mikael, what about you? So I think we've built um, a stable basic environment uh, for now. Um, and the next couple of months, we'll be improving that even more. We'll be fine tuning that even more. Uh, we'll be integrating the remote and work locally more. Um, yeah, so focus will be on improving and fine tuning. I would say exactly the same. I was going to say uh, it was optimizing and tweaking. Uh, we end up in this position where we work from home, work from office. It's this sort of mix. Uh, I think it's 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 optimizing the particular the unified comms piece. It's making sure that that is working consistently. Um, you know, for for video calls, audio calls, uh, contact center. There's there's a number of challenges out there with. Um, making sure all all components line up, and you know, you know, with Agile's 
you know, newest OS, there's Teams optimization there, there's Zoom optimization. So there's quite a lot of, um, there's a few f new features to explore. That's, uh, that's, that's where I see uh, our efforts. Okay, good. Um, any final thoughts from anybody? Does anybody have um, any words of wisdom they'd like to share with us? Yeah, I want to share one thing with you. Perfect. <laughs> uh, we were talking about UD Pocket. Yes. Um, when we were on Windows, um, we were uh, converting all the PCs from uh, Windows to, to IGEL. And our support guys, they call to the UDC Pocket the troubleshooter because <laughs> it was great because um, when they have a problem, they go just with the UDC Pocket and boots up the machine. Yeah. Hey, here is working and here, it's not working <laughs> and it was for for them it was a very big thing because yeah. uh, a lot of problems were solved with the uh, UDC pocket yeah uh, and it's interesting as well because when I, I spoke earlier about the UD pocket that we use in a in a syndicated third-party uh, business continuity site the supplier themselves actually commented to us that uh, so they're probably used to deploying a corporate image for, for when companies invoke their business continuity and they push out a corporate image to the machines for the, for the company. With us, we just hand out a UD pocket as the staff come in the door and they plug them in and the supplier has said, actually, you've got the slickest um, business continuity uh, mechanism that we've seen. So um it's uh we, we thought that was uh, that's quite interesting but yeah it, it's just you know there's no you know you know large corporate build to deploy there it's you know it's such yeah. a lightweight os isn't it yeah yeah definitely good if people want to learn more uh, about um your particular uh, deployment um then some of these sessions have been uh, pre-recorded i know i've done some interviews with uh, a number of you um, which have now been packaged up and are available for people to take a look at uh, today. Where we've... But uh, on behalf of everybody at this event, on behalf of IGEL, um, thank you uh, to the four of you. Thank you very much from me. Thank you and you're welcome.